In this problem, we're going to compute a breakaway force to break this box loose against the force of static friction. And then we're going to maintain the same size of the force and watch the box accelerate. So we're going to compute the magnitude of that acceleration. So one of the keys to talking about any kind of breakaway phenomenon is that it means the static friction force is maxed out right before it gives up, right before you break loose. And we know that the maximum static friction force is related to the normal force like this. So you have a static friction coefficient, 0.4 in this case, multiplied by the normal force. And what this is communicating is that the harder that object is pressed into the surface, the bigger the friction force can be, which I think makes a lot of intuitive sense. So I suppose it'll get too crowded up here if I try to do everything on that diagram. So I'm going to just redraw the box. It's five kilograms. So we'll get a force of gravity on that. There's my mass, five kilograms. And so gravity's pulling down as usual. A little weight vector, weight equals mg. That's five times 9.8. which turns out to be 49 newtons pointing down. Um, I don't have any external forces tampering with the vertical direction here. So it's my normal force is just going to be straight up and it's going to be equal to the weight. So technically we just applied Newton's second law um, to the case where there's no acceleration vertically and said that the net force is, is equal to zero, so the upward force better be equal to the downward force. But we don't normally show that when the case is this simple. Um, I'm going to assume that my applied force is right at that breakaway cutoff. And the reason the block wasn't moving up until now is because there's a static friction force opposing that applied force. Okay. So next, we can do the force analysis in the x direction. Say that the breakaway force, well, that's equal to the maximum static friction force. Which is the static friction coefficient multiplied by normal force, which is 0 0.4 times 49. Let's bring up my calculator. And I get 19.6 Newtons. So that's the cutoff where if you exceed that by even an infinitesimal amount, you'll see the box break away and, and start to move. All right, so let's suppose that we maintain that force. nineteen point six newtons and the box has broken away and it's begun to slide well now we have a kinetic friction problem I have a force of nineteen point six newtons applied I'm going to go ahead and throw in the weight vector. And that just stays the same. So I don't have to redo the calculation. The normal force, that stays the same. So I don't have to redo the calculation. But in the leftward direction, I now have a kinetic friction force. And that's going to be given by the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. So we don't have to worry about the vertical direction. Uh, there's no, no acceleration going on there. In the horizontal direction, I'm going to analyze Newton's second law. So F net equals MA. And I have a 19.6 Newton force pointing to the right. And I have a static or a kinetic friction force pointing to the left. 
and I'm going to go ahead and write that as mu k times n and then that's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration so 5 kilograms times the acceleration all right let's put in the rest of our numbers I have 19.6 minus 0.3 times 49 equals 5a I guess I'll just solve it for a and then we'll go to the calculator so a is 19.6 minus 0.3 times 49 all divided by 5 so get our calculator I have 19.6 minus 0.3 times 49 let's go ahead and consolidate those by pressing enter divide the result by 5 and I get an acceleration of 0 0.98 meters per second squared.